There are plenty of well-known Sonic games over the years, but there's also a lot of lesser-known titles, and hiding deep within the midst of mediocrity is one of my dirty little pleasures, Sonic Labyrinth. This was for the Game Gear, Sega's answer to the Game Boy. The Game Gear was bigger than the Game Boy, and one hell of a battery hog, but it had a backlit screen, and it was in color. I do have a real copy of this game, but since it's for the Game Gear, it's hard to get game footage off of it and record it, so I have to admit that I'm using an emulator for that purpose. But I'm still going to pretend just for the hell of it that I'm playing a game on here, because I figured they got away with it on that Jackie Chan movie, Rumble in the Bronx, so why can't I? Sonic Labyrinth is a very unique Sonic game. Unlike other Sonic games, even on the Game Gear, Sonic's speed is greatly reduced. The reason why is that the diabolical Dr. Robotnik swapped out Sonic sneakers with some super slow shoes. And if you're wondering who Dr. Robotnik is instead of Dr. Eggman, I'm shaking my fist at you right now. And what's the story with that anyways? It was officially accepted that his name was Robotnik. Here it is in the game manual. Dr. Robotnik, Dr. Robotnik, Dr. Robotnik. He even got to have his own game named after him, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. He even identifies himself as Dr. Robotnik at the beginning of Sonic Adventure, but then Sonic has a really lame comeback and just calls him Eggman. But then all of a sudden he just accepts that, it's like he fully embraces the insult. My name is Dr. Eggman, the world's greatest scientist. And in this video, he's addressing the entire world as essentially a terrorist holding the Earth hostage, and he still calls himself Eggman. Does he not understand that this is a fat joke making fun of his physique? It's offensive! It's like if in Zelda, when Link talks to Malin, and she calls him a fairy boy, he was like, Oh, yeah, good one, burn. Let me go back to the name menu and change that right now. But I'm getting way off topic again. The only way Sonic can get his speed back is by gathering the Chaos Emeralds that Robotnik's hidden in his super labyrinth. And you can't stay there for long. That's the only explanation you get for why there's a time limit. But considering that they gave an entire page of the manual dedicated to the story, I can't complain. Most games like this wouldn't even bother trying to make up a story. Essentially, you're in a maze where you need to find three keys in order to exit. You can still use Sonic's spin dash to travel quickly and attack enemies. Instead of the standard Sonic setup where rings are your lifeline, time is basically your health. Defeating enemies, collecting keys, or grabbing this yellow power-up will add time. Getting hit by enemies or walking into traps will lower how much time you have, and it may send your keys flying too. Some of the traps will hurt you even if you're invincible. Damn. Another major departure is that this is played from a semi-3D perspective as opposed to a 2D side-scroller. Sonic Labyrinth also came out in 1995, a year before Sonic 3D Blast. So this is the first Sonic game in North America to have this perspective. There was one earlier isometric 3D Sonic game, but it was for the arcade and it never came to North America. There are earlier examples outside of Sonic, though. There are four main worlds, each with four levels each. There's one in the sky, one under the sea, one in a factory, and one in a castle. The last level in each world always consists of a long ramp filled with rings, a huge pinball-like tube, and then a boss fight. During boss fights, the normal Sonic mindset where you always want to have a ring comes back. Plus, the rings you find here and in the bonus stages are worth 25 each. Kick ass! Defeating bosses will earn you one of the Chaos Emeralds you need to fix Sonic's shoes, which is another departure from Sonic's standards. Usually in a Sonic game, Chaos Emeralds are awarded for completing a special stage, and they give you a better ending. But in Sonic Labyrinth, it's best to think of them as more of a required story item. Sadly, you won't walk any faster the more Chaos Emeralds you gather. It's more of a all-or-nothing kind of thing. Except this blue power-up seems to give you your speed back, so what the hell, what, does he just wear these boots on top of the slow boots? This game has enough differences that really makes it distinct. 
Most people that I knew at the time hadn't have heard of it, and those that had played it didn't seem to like it for how different it was. But personally, I had lots of other Sonic games that I already loved, and the fact that this one was so unique is something that made it stand apart from the pack, and that's what drew me into it. Another thing that made this Sonic game stand apart was it had some violent overtones. Look at this, there's fire-breathing skulls. There's even guillotines laying around. Yeah, Robotnik's not messing around anymore, he wants to chop Sonic's head off. Plus, if you fall off a ledge, it's like a Mortal Kombat-style fall to your death. Epic. The game is pretty short. Here, see, I beat it in 15 minutes, and I was taking my time. But this game does have a few secrets, like a bonus stage and the level select menu. The bonus stage is pretty cool, too. You gotta love anything with flashing lights, bumpers, flippers, anything from a pinball game. Although the manual says there are two bonus stages, but I've only ever found the one, and I've played this game a lot of times. There's also this clock in the castle level that sometimes it rings and releases birds, and sometimes it doesn't. I'm guessing it has something to do with how fast you finish the level, but I, I really don't know what the point of it is. I'll give the level designer some credit, too. Each world has a theme that they integrated in pretty well, and they took full advantage of the color capabilities of the game gear. Although some of these castle levels have some crazy non-Newtonian shit going on. Doors don't always return you to the same place that you entered them from, which can make a maze really confusing to navigate. This game also has a pretty memorable soundtrack, and I may or may not have a few of these songs on my iPod. There's also a time attack mode that allows you to do a time trial. You've gotta be fast as hell to get 5 stars, though. Damn, beat that. Once you beat the game, it'll tell you hints or things you missed, or pretty much just tell you that you rock. And if you do well, it'll even give you the level select code. This game is pretty simplistic, but it was for the Game Gear, so that's not a huge drawback here. We never really expected a whole lot of things out of the portable consoles back then. I always liked this game for how unique it was. It made it a point to stand apart from every other Sonic game in the series. I wouldn't recommend that you go out and buy a Game Gear just for this game, but if you're a hardcore Sonic fan, it's worth checking out.